Hello YouTube, Validation Boy here. The so-called scientists of our world claim that, through their famous double-slit experiment, they possess the ability to transform solid particles into waves of energy. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the only way to test the validity of such a ridiculous claim would be to isolate, observe, and record all the behaviors of a single particle within the experiment itself. And therein lies a huge problem. There is no such thing as an isolated particle. In fact, it is impossible to isolate a single particle. We live in a material world. Physical existence, or perceivable space-time, necessitates the presence of matter. Therefore, every particle of matter that exists is inherently connected to at least one other particle of matter. If a particle were to change into a wave, any observation we could make of such a phenomena would be inescapably skewed by the fact that our principal particle is attached to neighboring particles. These neighboring particles would in some way inevitably affect the observations we made about our principal particle, thus rendering any information we might gather regarding their behaviors completely irrelevant. So when you really think about it, the theory of wave-particle duality is a total paradox. It is something that literally cannot be tested for. In the arena of quantum mechanics, energy and matter are considered the same thing. Now, the double-slit experiment proposes the dualistic wave-particle nature of all matter. But by doing so, it also implies that any such particle which has transformed into its alleged energetic wave form must also remain finite and measurable. Otherwise, this experiment would not provide its conductor with any legitimate changes to observe. Scientists would need to be able to provide proof that a single particle has the capability of transforming from one state of being into another before claiming that all particles behave in such a manner. Since this is not something that is ever going to be physically possible, big science is merely postulating when claiming that such transformations can and do occur. Nowhere in our so-called universe is there a pocket of space-time that is completely devoid of matter. Otherwise, that pocket of space-time would not exist. Such an area, for lack of a better term, would feature no energy or matter for us to observe and would thus be impossible for us to acknowledge as a perceivable segment of our extant reality. One may ask, could such a space be created? But the answer is no. To create is to manifest something into the parameters of space-time. We can't uncreate a space devoid of space-time. That would be at best a paradox and at worst an oxymoron. This of course brings us to the question of man-made vacuum chambers. Is it possible to isolate a single particle inside of a so-called vacuum? Well, what very few people know is that there is no such thing as a perfect vacuum. The vacuum chambers that big science and our governments use in their tests are all referred to as near-perfect vacuums. They admit that space-time itself is one variable they'll never be able to eliminate from these types of experiments. And on top of all this, don't forget about the fact that the walls of any supposed vacuum chamber must still be comprised of particles. All this just goes to show that, even within an imaginary perfect vacuum, there would still be no way to create an actual, quote, space devoid of all matter. But let's just play along anyways, and pretend for a moment that we did have access to a perfect vacuum. And let's pretend we wanted to isolate a single particle within that perfect vacuum. The first method we might try using would be to extract all the particles from the chamber while leaving only one behind. Well, as observed earlier, physical reality does not allow for this, as individual particles cannot be isolated. There is no technology capable of achieving such a reality-shattering feat, and there never will be. The alternate method would be to insert a previously isolated particle into an already matterless chamber. But think about it. These acts of extraction and insertion would still necessitate the use of a force, and as we know, forces are a form of energy, or at the very least, forces necessitate the use of energy in the form of particles to manifest their observable effects. Thus, any particle which is being enacted upon by a force is one that is definitively not in a state of isolation. Matter, energy, and space-time are all inescapably intertwined, and it is clear that God is responsible for this. The omnipotence of an all-knowing creator is the only plausible explanation behind the complex existence we are experiencing. The concept of wave-particle duality is rooted in mankind's vanity. It has managed to captivate the world with its deceptive lore of godlike what-if potentiality. But it is not the truth. It's nothing more than the temptation of the devil incessantly tapping on your shoulder. Remember, you are living in our Holy Father's realm of creation, and there's no way around his rules. All you cucked out cheerleaders for big science out there had better start getting used to it. You will not become gods. You will not upload your consciousness and cheat death. You will not escape judgment. 
All of your ridiculous pseudosciences are born of satanic intent, and I, for one, refuse to play your stupid game any longer. As always, much respect, and thanks for watching.